questions for sisters. Who is more protective? Who takes longer to get ready? Who sleeps in more? Who is more competitive? Who is the first to forgive in a fight? Whose room is messier? Who is weirder when no one is watching? Who is better at keeping secrets? Who got into more trouble as a kid? Who gives the best hugs? Who sings louder in the car? The Collins family is crushed, hearts shattered, keeling over in pain and agony. <laughs> The wailing is heartbreaking. Family holding each other tight outside court. Monisha Collins was a victim of domestic violence. Her boyfriend has been charged with her murder. He took my little sister from me, my best friend. Enough of this. How do we correct this? His mother should be arrested for giving birth to him. Evil exists in this world. Trust no one, no one, no one, no one, no one, no one. This is the story of Monisha Collins, a beautiful, generous, considerate woman who fell for the wrong man, an ex-con, and was murdered and left on her bedroom floor for her 10-year-old daughter to find. The story takes us to New Britain, Connecticut, a city with a large Polish population and traditions where you'll also find New Britain's Museum of American Art, New Britain Industrial Museum, Dinosaur State Park and Museum only minutes away, Walnut Hill Park, beautiful sightings such as the picturesque Beehive Bridge, and numerous eateries to explore. Monisha was born in Manhattan, New York, to her loving parents, James and Jacqueline Collins. They later moved to North Carolina, where Monisha attended Washington High School. After graduating, Monisha moved to New Britain, Connecticut, fell in love with the city, and has been living there ever since. She has a beautiful 10-year-old daughter, Michaela, who was her world, and she loved being her mother more than anything else in this world. In June of 2023, she met a man by the name of Vincent Blair, and the two hit it off. He was 46 years old, and she was 27. Monisha was pleasantly surprised by how kind, caring, and warm Vincent was, and when she complimented him, he vowed he would always be that way because that's the way he was made. Monisha enjoyed having deep, intimate conversations about life, and Vincent was perfect for that. She quickly fell in love, and when Vincent told her she should let her very close longtime friend know she had him now and did not need her, she did exactly that. They had a good couple of months, going out together and spending time with each other. But soon, that would change. As if Vincent was pretending and could not pretend anymore, he seemed to suddenly switch on Monisha and began raising his voice at her and becoming more and more aggressive and controlling as the weeks go by. This caught Monisha off guard as she did not realize she was missing red flags, but because she did not like being shouted at or spoken to harshly. That caught her attention and made her see all the ways he was trying to control her. She would try talking with Vincent about the way he was treating her and tried to find out what happened that made him changed. But Vincent would convince her that he didn't change. It was her doing things to make him shout and be aggressive. Monisha was really in love and she wanted their relationship to work, so she decided to be more careful not to upset Vincent so he could go back to being the man she fell in love with. But it was about to get worse. In the weeks that followed, Vincent's actions escalated from being controlling to being physically abusive to Monisha. And although Monisha loved him, she was not going to take being abused. He had pushed past her limit and stepped over her boundary and she knew she had to end the relationship. Her daughter Michaela was also witnessing the abuse and she felt helpless. And Monisha could not allow that to keep happening either. So she told Vincent the relationship was over. She could not remain in an unhealthy relationship, being hurt and abused by someone who should be loving and protecting her. But Vincent was not having it. And in the midst of all that was happening, Monisha found out she was pregnant for Vincent and that discovery could not have come at a worse time. Vincent would still travel back and forth, refusing to accept that the relationship was not working for Monisha and she wanted out. On the morning of December 1st, 2023, 
As Monisha's 10-year-old daughter Michaela was getting ready for school, she heard her mom and Vincent arguing. He was trying to remain in Monisha's life, but Monisha had had enough and she told him to take his things and leave. After getting a few more words in, he then left the apartment at around 7.38 and Michaela left for school shortly after. But moments later, Vincent returned to the apartment. While Monisha was in her bedroom relaxing and trying to gather herself, Vincent came back into the apartment around 9.18 a.m. holding a gun. He walked straight into the bedroom where Monisha was. And as Monisha looked up and saw him with the gun, she panicked and begged him to please put the gun away. But he immediately pointed it at her and began screaming at her. And as Monisha stood up and started backing away while frantically trying to find the right words to say to make him put the gun away, he became more and more enraged and began shooting her. And as she stumbled and fell to the floor, he continued shooting her until she stopped moving. He then quickly gathered his things, looking around to ensure he had everything, then hastily left the apartment at around 9.28 and fled to Pennsylvania, where he booked himself into a motel in Ben Salem. Meanwhile, at around 4 p.m. that same day on December 1st, Monisha's 10-year-old daughter Michaela came home from school and noticed the front door was locked, which was unusual. She then tried the back door, which opened, and as she went in to find her mom as she always does, she found her laying in a pool of blood on her bedroom floor. Hysterically crying, 10-year-old Michaela called her mom's big sister, her Aunt Justina, and she could barely get the words out. But as soon as Justina realized what Michaela was saying, she quickly rushed over to the apartment where she found her niece over her mom's body still hollering hysterically. A few of the neighbors, as well as Justina, had called 911, and while Justina was inside consoling Michaela, the neighbors who had gathered outside the 100 block of Fairview Street flagged down a police car and directed them to the apartment. Inside, the officers found Monisha unresponsive laying in a pool of blood on the floor of her bedroom, and she was pronounced dead shortly after. After speaking with Michaela and Justina, Investigators learned about what happened earlier that day and about the abuse Monisha had faced being with Vincent. The authorities quickly zeroed in on Monisha's boyfriend Vincent Blair as the suspect and traced him to a motel in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, where a SWAT team went and arrested him and subsequently worked with Pennsylvania authorities to have him extradited to New Britain, Connecticut the next day to face murder charges. An emotional day indeed, and keep in mind here that following Monisha's killing, Blair allegedly fled the state. He was captured by a SWAT team at a motel in Pennsylvania a day later and then brought back here to Connecticut to face a judge. Vincent confessed everything, and he appeared at his bail hearing looking rather nonchalant like whatever, and the judge placed him on $5 million bond. But he could not afford it. Blair's been charged with murder. A judge said his bond at $5 million tonight. His attorney implied in court that he won't be able to pay it. And so he is being held at the county jail and will reappear in court in January of 2024 to answer to murder charges. It was later determined by investigators that Monisha had been shot at least five times shortly after Michaela left for school. And she was determined to be six weeks pregnant. The facts of this case, Judge, are horrific. Monisha was shot at least five times in her bedroom on December 1st. Shockingly, her 10-year-old daughter, Michaela, found her dead. And she had to see it. She was the first one to see it. Monisha was dating Blair for six months and was six weeks pregnant with his child. Her family says she was ready to cut things off a few weeks ago. My sister said that he talked aggressively to her and she didn't like it. The 46-year-old Blair allegedly took off after the shooting. Police tracked him down in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, where he confessed to the murder, according to officers. Like many domestic violence abused victims, Monisha had had no support in her battle with domestic violence because she was very secretive and she did not tell anyone Vincent was abusing her. Even her sister, who was also her best friend, had no idea. Taking it moment by moment is so hard. She didn't want to be with him and he could not control her in the way that he wanted to control her, so he took her life. There are predators out here and you need to be careful 
and make sure you like share information with your family. Justina says her sister didn't share much about Blair, just that he talked aggressively and she wanted to leave him. At the end of the day, like it could literally come to this like life or death. So like, I just wish I knew more. However, neighbors knew about the abuse and after her death, they left lit candles on Monisha's doorstep, along with notes expressing their regrets he endured his abuse and ended up dying at his hand. Monisha's daughter, Michaela, also confirmed to her Aunt Justina, after her mom's death, that indeed her mom had experienced domestic violence. Monisha Collins' sister says that she's telling her story because she wants to help people who are in domestic violence situations. She says that while there wasn't any clear signs of abuse, her niece, her sister's daughter, confided in her after her death and said that there was. Now she wants to help people and other families to make sure that they're not in this heartbreaking situation. I found my niece over my sister. It's a reoccurring moment that plays in Justina Collins' mind. I don't want another little girl to walk home and, and come home from school and see her mom bleed it out on the floor because some monster couldn't control her. It is unclear if Monisha knew Vincent had a criminal history, but Vincent has a long criminal history of violent crimes, including assault, attempted murder, robbery, criminal use of a firearm, and has been convicted of 10 crimes dating back to 1994, and had spent years in prison. We learned Tuesday that 46-year-old Vincent Blair of Hartford has an extensive criminal past. He spent years in prison for violent crimes. Dating all the way back to 1994. One can only imagine the devastation the family is experiencing right now. God, we know that justice shall be served, God. Her sister, Justina, losing her little sister and best friend at a time when they should be celebrating the holidays together. Instead of celebrating the holidays with my family and my sister and celebrating, you know, my nieces and my daughter's birthday, I now have to bury my little sister. I just want justice for my sister and I want this, her story to hopefully help someone else. I have to live with the, like knowing that a monster took my sister away from me and my family and her daughter and our life is forever changed by that. Her grand aunt, who was beside herself having to bury her grand niece she watched, grew up. Enough of this! How do we correct this? His mother should be arrested for giving birth to him. They should not feed him. They should let him suffer because the 10-year-old great-grandchild of mine has gone without her mother. Domestic violence is real. And unless we start showing that we don't give them no consideration, we're going to be the ones losing our daughters by gunshots. I think they should give him double homicide. I don't know where they're going with one, because those were two people. Her brother having to come to grips that a man his sister has only recently met has done her so terribly. I just can't believe it that someone was evil enough to take a kind-hearted soul away from me and my family, especially her daughter, then leaving the body there for her 10-year-old daughter to be the first one to see her mom in cold blood, unresponsive. But more than anything, one can only imagine the pain, agony, and distress Monisha's daughter, Michaela, is experiencing not only of losing her beloved mom, but having to be the one to find her dead in the most inhumane and disturbing condition. It was very heartless of Vincent to murder Monisha, but was even more heartless to murder her and leave her there on the bedroom floor, knowing that the person who would most likely find her would be her daughter when she got home from school. Because Monisha fell in love very quickly with Vincent and was blinded by his pleasant and kind demeanor, she missed the subtle red flags of him being controlling and possessive of her in the beginning of their relationship. Like that time, she told her longtime friend who was always calling and keeping in touch with her that she could no longer be friends with her because of Vincent. Vincent had mastered the art of love bombing and manipulation and was using it on Monisha. But Monisha was new to those tricks, so she was fooled. 
She thought he was the sweetest, kindest man she had ever met because he was very attentive and affectionate to her. He constantly told her she was beautiful and incessantly talked about their future together, getting married soon and having kids when they barely just met. Love bombing can be complicated to figure out and differentiate from someone who is really that into you. But one common way to figure it out is, if you are uncomfortable with something he's doing like, for example, pressing you to commit to the relationship moving in with him or allowing him to move in with you when you've barely just met, and you let him know you need more time. If he listens to you, agree to be patient, and you notice he has made the change and stopped pressing, then he most likely respects you and care about having a healthy relationship with you. However, if he becomes combative, argumentative trying to convince you and continue to ignore your stance and boundaries, then those are signs he's not with you because he care and really want to be with you, but rather to gain control over you. And if you ignore those subtle red flags, they will move to their next phase of control once you've let your guard down and become comfortable in the relationship. They may become more demanding of your time and get upset when you make plans without them. They may try to limit access to your friends and family and gaslight you into thinking nothing is wrong with their behavior. They may use fear and intimidation to get you to behave differently than you normally would and even resort to physical violence as the relationship progresses, as we've seen in Monisha's case. Ladies, if you are single and looking to be in a committed relationship, be attentive as much as possible in the dating phase of the relationship. Look out for subtle red flags and do not. Give them a pass. Otherwise, you will become relaxed and comfortable and he will get himself planted in your life, so to speak. And he will continue moving through his next phases of control. And by this time, you will want to end the relationship. But as you can see, based on most of these incidences we've covered, it is at this time you are more prone to losing your life just by trying to leave that man. So this evening, experts say the most dangerous time in a violent relationship is when the person being abused tries to leave. The Connecticut Coalition of Domestic Violence is reminding all of us help is available to get you to safety. NBC Connecticut's Amanda Pitts joining us live tonight in New Britain with more. Amanda? Yeah, hey Mike and Keisha, that organization tells us that on average there are 14 intimate partner homicides in the state of Connecticut every year. Liza Andrews from the Connecticut Coalition Against Domestic Violence says leaving is the most dangerous time for a victim. Domestic violence at its core is about control and coercion. And pregnancy associated deaths are on the rise. She says to those who want to help, listen without judgment. And to victims themselves. And just know that you're not alone. You can call the hotline, you can work with a member or organization just to talk, just to have someone to listen, just to have that sounding board. Now, if you or someone you know needs help, that hotline is on your screen right now, 888-774-2900. And never ignore that gut feeling. Anything he does that makes you pause, do not overlook or bypass. Domestic violence abuse is a huge issue and has been since the beginning of time. However, with the advent of social media and advanced technology, it seems domestic violence has increased exponentially and many victims who tried to escape have ended up dead. Know the signs and how to get away safely. You do not have to stay and endure it, but you do have to be smart to escape it. We've already talked in previous videos about how to get away safely and remain alive. We are living in a drastic time as far as wanting to get out of a relationship and getting out alive. And drastic times demand drastic measures if getting out alive is the goal. Leaving a relationship should not be a death sentence. Protect yourself and ensure you get out alive. Like so many children in recent years, Michaela has lost her beloved mom after having her for 10 whole years because of a man who came into her mom's life for less than one year. Think about that for a minute. There is nothing like having her mom, but thankfully, Michaela has her Aunt Justina who loves her very much and is often seen on TikTok having fun with her. When the beat drop, I'ma give it straight to him like, ah, ah, give it to him, ah, ah, give it to him, ah, ah, give it to him, ah, ah, give it to him. Give it to her. Ah, give it to her. Ah, give it to her. Ah, give it to her. 
and she also has other family members who will all care for her. I sincerely hope Michaela will get the counseling therapy and patience she will need to get through the horror she experienced, and may she find strength, comfort, and peace as she navigates this world that has forever changed the way she once saw it. May Monisha's precious soul rest in peace, and may her family find strength and peace to get through this devastating time of their lives, and may they get the justice they desire and deserve. What would you have done if you've fallen in love with a man and within months he started revealing an abusive side of himself? Think about it, then share in the comments. And please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe out there. And remember, trust no one. And I'm a ride a pony like genuine. I want a bacan, JT, I need some long money. What I'm here for with some Jerry Jones money.